Okay, so we're back for final thoughts. So chat can gather their own spoiler-free comments or even spoiler comments for later on in this particular final thoughts. Let's talk about the Phoenix Wright trilogy. We just completed the third game. We played all of them back to back to back. And this is where it's really hard to make a determination. If, if we were to break it down more simply in a game per game basis, I think the first game was worth playing. I do not think the second game was worth playing at all and was originally a big deterrent uh, back when it was on the handheld for me continuing the series. And I think the third game... I don't know if I like it more than the first game or not. We'll, we'll evaluate those feelings, I think, towards the spoiler section more than anything else. But I think it tried. It tried something different. It brought back some of the magic of the first game. And we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll, we'll talk on a case-by-case -case basis at the end. But overall premise of the game, you are basically playing a majority of the time as Phoenix Wright, who is a defense attorney in one of the world's most wacky, wacky world versions of the law, <laughs> where everything has to be done in three days. So you will be assigned to an assortment of ridiculous cases with ridiculous people, with ridiculous freakouts. And you basically go through a text adventure, start to finish, uh, that is a mix of courtroom scenes, investigation mode, where you investigate the area of the crime, or perhaps uh, give interviews to people, and present evidence both in and out of courtroom in order to uh, get further in the case. There's a big core mechanic throughout the game that's not super spoilery, but I think it's important to talk about here, where basically you were allowed to see the truth behind what people are saying when you're out of the courtroom. And a lot of that has to do with being able to use the evidence mode in order to present items or profiles to get further in the story, to get confessions or to get other p uh, critical pieces of info. So that part of the game is okay. I think most people will probably enjoy more the courtroom scene version of the game where they get to see outrageous people doing outrageous things, doing potentially outrageous things. And depending on the case of the game, sometimes it feels somewhat fair, other times it comes off as a little confusing. But essentially as we go and press the witnesses for statements, which will potentially introduce new uh, written statements for us to present evidence against in order to get further in the case, or directly presenting evidence against things, or sometimes presented with multiple choice if we're determining whether or not something is a contradiction, or if we should push for more information when we do press for stuff. I think there's enough here that it, it makes it like somewhat interesting from a gameplay standpoint. So I think most people that are like vaguely interested in this kind of game I would just go in with the notion that if you want a very serious game or you want something that really covers uh, aspects of the law or even just a lot of drama, these games kind of fail at that pretty hard. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes intentionally from the game design standpoint, other times I think they try really hard but they kind of flub it. So a little bit unfortunate there, but I think overall if it wasn't, yeah, I was going to say evidence law, evidence law being the big meme of the stream. Uh, but the other thing that I think kind of redeems it is that I do think despite how bad the second game was, the third game was enjoyable as a standalone. So I, I think I would give this a recommendation with a caution that honestly really do not do not play the second game unless you are morbidly curious. All the events that are important from the second game are basically recapped in the third game anyway. So there's really no point to the second game at all other than to introduce really awful characters. And speaking of which, I do think that is one of the both pros and cons of Phoenix Wright. Like it is some very memorable villains and their freak out moments when you finally get them caught in a trap basically in the courtroom. But I think there's some pretty awful stereotypes that kind of link every, every game has one I, I can't think of a game that didn't have one without going into like super spoilers but yeah some of those characters really did not age well so i, I will put caution to that that uh it is a product of its time i think the third game in particular was super heavy on pop culture references so things like the harlem shake and bringing all the milkshakes to the yard aged uh 
interestingly, <laughs> in context of that game in particular. So take, yeah, exact. Thank you, Blue Donna, huh, indeed. So take that as you will. Be prepared for a lot of dated references, because these are an older series of games, to be fair. But at the same time, that kind of comes with cultural... I'm not going to call them norms, but things that were more acceptable then end up in the game. And I, I will not go into more details than that, other than just be warned that that kind of stuff exists. So that might be a turnoff for some people in some games. Either it's a profession or something about their identity that's a very big question mark or a hmm. When you're kind of going through those things. Uh, there's a there's a group of recurring characters. I will say in a general sense, I did not like most of the recurring characters unless they were on the other team. Honestly, I thought the prosecutors were probably the more interesting of the characters that you interact with without going into super details. So they kind of help carry the game quite a bit alongside the, uh, not necessarily the defendants, as I did also find most of the defendants to be kind of annoying, to be honest. But I think in regards to the potential murderers, I think the murderers and the prosecutors kind of hard carried the game. And I felt kind of lukewarm towards uh, the defense attorney and definitely did not enjoy some of the reoccurring characters, whether they were witnesses or otherwise. So I think that's all I really have to say from a non-spoiler standpoint, other than if you're even if you're not interested in the game, I would say give the soundtracks a listen. We're listening to it right now. It's very catchy, very memorable. So definitely shout outs to the soundtrack. Soundtrack was probably the also a thing that really helped a very, very text heavy game uh, go through a lot more smoothly by having those memorable moments. Also shout out to some of the sound design as well with uh, things like depending on who was speaking, like whether it was a man, a woman or a child, etc. Uh, it, it changed like the lightness of the text that so helped give the text a little bit of personality in an otherwise, as I said before, extremely text heavy game. So I think they did a good job there. And uh, yeah, I, I think some things in the HD upscale looked a bit weird because I'm assuming they tried to uh, make it fit a little better. So most of the characters were fine, but some of the backgrounds were a little questionable. And I'll leave it at that. So that's that's my non-spoiler talk. I would say recommendation with an asterisk and just be aware that there are certain elements of it that you would not think about when you think about like a mostly kind of comedy-ish game or like a parody of things. Uh, but I do just want to raise that for concern. So chat, I think it's time. We're the only real way to talk about this game in detail. We're gonna we're gonna talk about it case by case. Those chat ready. I have fortunately with me a tier list. Let's go ahead and add it in. That is 2 1. So I guess we'll start with the very first game that was on the list. Although I could probably scroll down a little so Chat could see it a little better. We didn't see the other games, so we'll just ignore those icons. But from the standpoint of this particular one, where would we rate the very first game is the question we should be asking. In fact, to try to reduce spoilers, I could do something like this. I think the first case with the, the clock murder, I think was okay. Like, do we... Like, I, I think I might reassess the value as we go through. Like, it introduced the concept of the court system, which I think it did it fine. It had a very straightforward villain. It had, like, the joke prosecutor. So it's somewhere for me between B and C. I think for now, I'm going to call this as, like, the gatekeeper. So if I don't think cases are as good as this, I think this is literally the bottom of B or top of C. So I might move it up to B, depending on how the other cases kind of filter in. Up next, we have The Murder of Maya with Red White. I'm going to be honest with you, chat. I barely remember this case, so I can't rate it that highly. Like, it was fine, I guess. Like, in the first game, this was probably the least memorable case for me. Compared to the other ones, I feel like the villain was okay. 
what, is, what does chat feel about this particular case? Like, it introduced the death of Maya, which was an important plot point. But, like, were there any other crazy things we really enjoyed from that particular one? It had the kind of annoying April May in it. So I'm just trying to I'm trying to give little indicators for chat to even remember this case, because for me, I'm really struggling to think about it. So I think for this one, just from the standpoint where even though it had such an important plot point, I either just didn't like the villains or just didn't think it was memorable. I might, I might put it at D, honestly, either end of C or top of D. So I'm going to temporarily put it here and maybe I'll put I'll, maybe I'll bump one one up a little bit. Yeah, it's just kind of, they, they were okay. It just, it wasn't anything like too crazy. Like it was a straightforward case. You basically know who did it. So from that standpoint, I don't really have too much to say from that angle. I, I wasn't really endeared with the characters. Like, ah, uh, and, and then like, okay. So now let's talk about, I guess the next case. So, as I said before, Red White, I, even though it had important plot elements, I, it just, I don't think it spoke to me like the other cases. Yeah, so that's, I can't rate it very high. So it's somewhere between mediocre and lacking for me. We'll put 1-1 one, one up here, because I think it actually was a pretty good introduction to the game. It it captured characters like Larry, the point of the protagonist, uh, the clock. The thinker clock was one of the most memorable parts of that game, to be honest with you. Though I feel like that just had so much more going for it, so I don't think those two deserve to be in the same tier. Up next, we have the introduction of the Steel Samurai. Unfortunately, this introduced some characters that I did not really enjoy. It had some very awful uh, stereotypes of the, uh, what was it, the nerd guy with the glasses and the backwards hat. I believe it had the very annoying kid that was collecting cards. And then they also had the very forgettable assistant. I think her name was Penny, because it was like Penny for her thoughts. It also introduced one of my least favorite comedy characters. So like, I think the actual case itself was a little stronger than 1-2, but I think I just really dislike the characters that were in this case. Like, does Chad agree with that statement? Like, 1-2 was like, straightforward. It introduced characters like the fat guy that Mia's partner was. Yeah, it's like Penny Nickel or something, yeah. So I'm curious what Chat really thought of this case, because for me, I, li I like the concept of, like, the body being dragged around. Grossberg, thank you. The body being dragged around. I thought there were elements of the investigation that were better than, like, 1-2. But I think just, there's just... There were just so many unlikable characters or forgettable characters. So I'm kind of tempted to put this after 1-2. Possibly in D tier. We're gonna reassess that, I think. Oh, Grossberg got way horrible in the third game. Yeah, expect expect a comment when we get up to that point. So I think for now, I'm gonna rate them like this. Then up next, we have, I believe the case was called Turnabout Goodbyes, which I think has my favorite villain, my favorite plot arc. It had the senile old man at the duck shop. I think I'm just gonna put this straight in S, to be honest with you. I think this had the most memorable villain. It had a great freak out. It had a nice build of evidence. I liked the I liked the ridiculous roars of the of the victim, or not the victim, of the murderer. It's either S or A chat. There's I don't think it's on like it's definitely better than the first case of the first game. I just think it introduced so many more interesting characters. We got we got Edgeworth. That that's a big that's a big plus. We got a lot of Edgeworth chat. That puts it almost automatically in A tier. Now the real question is the the hot take I think of this one would be, what do we think about one five compared to one four? Do you think they're on the same tier? So one five is a reminder involved uh, the. I wanted, I was about to say martial law. I was thinking Tekken again, but it involved the fake sheriff. It involved the food giver. It had the police chief as the main vic as the main murderer. It, it it introduced the meme of objection of not objection law of uh, evidence law. 
So I think by minimum standards, it's probably great. The only thing that I did not like in the case was the 3D stuff. Like, where 1-4, I basically liked the case all the way through, including, like, the reveal that the old man was, you know, important to the case. I never liked the 3D movement. I felt like that was very tacked on. I think that kind of weighed it down a little bit. But I think in terms of, like, the freakout scene, like, the, the police captain doing, like, the one-frame claps, uh, just the overall, like, pressure on the character, I think this was one of the better cases in the game. So what do you say, Chad? Is th does this belong in amazing or great? Because I don't think it belongs in awful, lacking, or mediocre, because... I think it tried its best to make the evidence gathering a lot better. Chat's thinking great. That's fair. I think it's probably top of great, to be honest. I don't think there's a big margin of difference between these two cases. I just think overall, I had a complaint about 1.5 where 1.4, even though there were some moments in it where I did get a little annoyed. I mean, it didn't, it even had the parrot. Like, honestly, it, it had so many memorable characters. I think it's allowed to have, like, a one-off whiff at that point. The ratio of things it introduced that worked to not worked is just very high compared to the other things. Um, okay. So we've now covered the first game to some extent. So let's talk about 2-1, which I think was, like, the only good case in the second game. Right, chat? Like, honestly, I think this was the only decent case. Now the question is, did you like this tutorial more or less than the other tutorial? This is what I was kind of thinking about. I liked... I don't know if I liked the setup, where Phoenix basically has amnesia, and he's basically retaught the case by... Um, Maggie. I like Maggie as a character... The, the murderer was about on par with 1-1s, where I wasn't, like, blown away by them. They were just kind of okay. Like, they they served their role. They had their freakout scene, but they weren't, like, really more ridiculous than normal. So it's like, did I like it more than the clock murder? Because I, I think what might put 1-1 put one, one ahead of itself is I really liked the ridiculous murder weapon, where 2-1 was a lot more straightforward. It had some weirdness where, like, the person fell and drew in blood. I don't know if I like that as much. I think I will begrudgingly put it lower than 1-1 one, one by a little bit. I, I did like the characters more than Larry, but I feel like the, the scene itself was a bit weaker. It, if it... I, I mean, it had banana... Well, it did have banana. But did banana trump the clock? I don't think so. The banana was pretty ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. Um, oh boy, the start of the channeling. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put that in D tier chat. Listen, this case was barely serviceable. It was very long. I feel like it, it really overstayed its welcome. It introduced a whole bunch of characters I didn't like. It reintroduced characters from the first game that I wasn't a big fan of. And it just started to get kind of annoying, to be honest. Like, it had a lot of heart returning from the first game. Which is, as I said before, was probably, like, the only whiff for me in 1-4. Um, in terms of character introductions. But I just really did not like this case start to finish. I think, be I think what really annoyed me the most was probably when I went to go investigate the bullet hole. When I went to go investigate the bullet hole, and the game went out of its way to chastise me that it wasn't the bullet hole, and then within two pieces of evidence, I then presented the bullet hole again. I'm not gonna lie, I still have a grudge on that case from that specific scene, so I will never rate that higher than a majority of the other cases. So I, so I guess why do I feel like it was lacking? Other than repeating joke characters that I don't really think were necessary, I'm not a fan, a fan of Pearls and Maya, so a case very set, like very centric on those two characters. I just didn't like. And then think about it too, like this is a lot of Francisca. So this is like kind of like the introduction to Francisca, who's not anywhere near as likable as Edgeworth. So it just it just felt like a big downgrade compared to the first game. Sorry Francisca. No thank you there. Chat, do we even need to go into discussion about 2-3? 
do do I need do I need to say anything other than it was the clown one? <laughs> like, dare dare I go in more detail? Is that was horrendous. <laughs> that was horrendous. This was by far there you know what? I feel like there should be another tier. If I if I made this, can I add another tier? At oh oh we can add below. Perfect. I think it deserves its own tier. <laughs> just, just, it is so bad. It is so, it is so heinous. The joke characters, terrible. The murder method, terrible. The witnesses, terrible. The leniency in court, terrible. The really unfunny humor, terrible. Everything about this case was bad. Between like the weird grooming of Regina and everything else, terrible. It does not even deserve to be in mention with this list. Now, my own personal question is, do I think 2-4 is as bad as 2-3, or is it still awful and not quite in clown tier? Because I'm going to let you know, chat, like, despite 2-3 introducing some of the most unlikable witnesses, which is honestly a feat to have that many terrible, it's like the inverse of 1-4. I do think 2-4 really overstayed its welcome. I'm gonna leave it in awful tier. Some people did like this case. I don't really know why. I think I had a lot of fatigue from 2-3 going into 2-4 where there were just too many really unfunny comic relief characters and then 2-4 is like, you know what you need? You need more lot of heart, old bag, and more terrible characters. <laughs> where like, the crime was a little better, I guess. I guess the whole stupid thing where like, oh no, Shelly the killer is the killer was one of the worst moments of the game. I think playing as Maya was also incredibly annoying. I think every single time we're in court and almost every single scene and ended with, oh no, Maya's not going to make it. I better keep doing this for Maya. Oh no, if I do this, then Maya won't be able to get free. Oh man, I don't think I bought enough time. Every damn step of the way through that really dragged it down. Like, I would have probably rated it as D tier, where I felt like it was probably just lacking with the characters. I think just how excruciating it was that it was, like, mechanically in there to purposely delay the trial. And then, like, when the trial was, like, about to end, that somebody else would burst in there over and over and over. Man, that case dragged. Yeah, the perfectly... D the too dark to see room is something else. They tried to replicate the magic of 1-4 with the parrot, uh, with the radio, and it was okay. But like, if the radio was like the only highlight of the case, that's kind of bad. Like the only thing 2-4 had besides that in the trial was probably the bear. I think the giant bear being the actual plot point was so dumb it's good, but I don't think the rest of the case rose to that level, sadly. Yeah, them bringing back Will Powers from 1-3, he's just okay. He was just okay. Yeah, like, there's elements of the case, I recall. I, I just I just felt like this case dragged on way too long for what it was. It just... Ugh, excruciating. I, I always remember us having to put, like, three pieces of evidence in to prove that people drove on the other side because it's Europe with the car. I'll always remember that scene. I'll always remember, like, uh, literally, like, every damn time we went to go end the trial that we found something to stall it. It was just like, ugh. Just kind of going through there, to be honest. It wasn't, like, a super elaborate crime either. I, I think, too, I would have I would have bumped this up a rating if at any point... Like, Phoenix ever finally got into a case where he had to defend somebody that was actually guilty and he knew it ahead of time? I feel like they almost made him go through that in 2-4, but then, like, he goes like, oh, I guess you get off scot-free, and I never really learned the moral of the lesson that defense attorneys sometimes have to defend people that aren't innocent. Though I feel like that was just a huge thematic miss on 2-4, where they could have actually addressed that very easily with almost no plot tweaks at all. 
And I feel like they just kind of dropped the ball by giving him an easy out at the end. I did not appreciate that from a narrative standpoint whatsoever. So, if, if he was supposed to learn his lesson that uh, not all people he defends are, are innocent, uh, he definitely forgets by the third game, <laughs> to put it that way. So, pretty awful. Actually, you know what? There we go. <laughs> we gotta break the color scale just for clown. <laughs> so I guess the question is... Of the remaining cases, we have 3-1. 3-1 I just found kind of gross. I think I'm willing to put this... At the end of Mediocre, maybe. I feel like this was probably one of the weakest intros to the game it tried to introduce you to maya grossberg was just kind of exceptionally gross i can't rate him on the same tier as the other tutorials which is weird that i find i like the tutorials more than the main cases which should say something to the problem of the writing of this game um but from the standpoint of 3-1 it just was like it, it felt like the prompt was what if phoenix but woman i never really felt like i was playing maya playing it and then I just had like a really gross companion with it for pretty much the whole time. So, arguably I could put that in D tier. I think the only thing it has in terms of a saving grace is that it was short. If this had been like a full-fledged full -fledged case, I probably would have knocked it down to D tier to be honest. I just didn't really find the characters all that compelling, and I feel like... It made me respect Maya less after we completed this. Or Mia, I'm sorry, I said Maya. I respected Mia less after this. I feel like it just kind of dumped all over the image they'd been building up for two games. I didn't really like that at all. Ooh. Damn, we're, we're now in the rough territory, Chad. So I'm willing to put this as I like this less than the game's first cases. I think that's a fair statement. I liked all of the game's first cases more than the tutorial in the third game. I think that's a true statement. I just, I really just did not like how they basically just made her like super self-conscious and all these other things. So just, and, and the ridiculous of this case combined with the other ones, I think I have to put that there. So chat, we're, we're going to go into what I think is uh, either the worst or the second worst case in the fifth game. And I have to think about which one I honestly dislike more. So as a reminder, for 3-2, I know, I know it's been a while since we played it. And honestly, it's memorable for the wrong reasons. This has the uh, detective look at me. This is the crime where they were moving the artifacts around in Lordly Taylor. This was kind of a weak case. I I thought Detective Look At Me was fine. He was very over the top evil. But I don't I don't know, Chad. There are just things in this that were a little I think okay, I think my big problem with 3-2 specifically, the thief. I think his name was Ron, Ron Delight. Horrible. He's one of the worst defendants in the in the game. I really, really, really hated this character. The one where he just he's the gimmick where he barely he just mumbles all the time. It's just kind of like ugh. It just was not great. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna put it in lacking. It's one of those ones where it had a lot of steps to it, but I don't think we really, like, really got anything out of it. Like, I guess I would have put it in awful if I had to deal with Old Bag, but we still had to deal with Larry again. Like, Old Bag had the cameo appearance of her items there. But yeah, it's just kind of one of those things where... I just don't think the case was just super memorable. Like, from the standpoint of the, uh, you know, the detective being the villain is is somewhat interesting. Just the way they did it with, like, the most whiny defendant ever, I just... 
I just couldn't get behind this case due to that character. I think we also had a lot of visits to characters that I don't think were super necessary, like the defendant's wife, I don't think really added much, if anything, to the game at all. Uh, the character with like the, the wrenches on the earrings or whatever. And I think overall, because this also involves so much with the Karain stuff, and I'm already not a fan of that element of the Phoenix Wright games, I think I have to rate this lower. I feel like 2-2 dragged on a little more than it should have, and I didn't really like the introduction of Pearls. But I think 3-2 introducing a character that is... I wouldn't even say arguably. I think they're just objectively way more annoying than Pearls because all they do is cry all the time. I don't think I can rate that higher than 2-2. So I think with that in mind, I'm going to leave this at like bottom of bottom of D tier. Now we have one of the unfor another unfortunate stereotype case, 3-3. Three, three. We could just call it Maid Cafe. Let's be honest, they kept saying French restaurant. We all know it's a Maid Cafe. Don't try to lie to us, Japan. This case was pretty awful. I, I honestly, like, I like Maggie. She was, like, the only highlight in the case for me because I think she's... Uh, likeable. Maybe I just like attached to her from her earlier stuff with Gumshoe between like 1-5 and 2-1. But man, every other damn character in this case was like nails on chalkboard. Whether it's the guy constantly flicking his nose, which is really gross. Also reminder, that character was in 2-4. So when we have a character competing with 2-4's awful grossness, and then like the really awkward gay stereotype chef, and then pretty much everything involving that case like they had the kind of meh ceo where we we talked to the people where their names were the same first uh forwards and backwards the palindrome people just overall not not a good case just not a good case i it just kind of went on and on and on, and the, the whole thing with the mirrors was really stupid. I thought they were going to use the mirrors in one way or another, but, like, there were so many... It, it's kind of like this and, like, uh, what was it? 2-3, the clown case. Both of these cases just had, like, a lot of really, really, really annoying amount of um, coincidences. Like, the only man that was there just happened to be really distracted by breasts, which is a plot point. It's horrible that that is a plot point. And that they could somehow set him up to see all this. It's just like, wow. Big wow. There there were some big leaps in there. Like, 2-3 with the whole... And then the coat magically landed back on the thing that was flying around on the wires. Was already bad enough, right? Like, that was already really bad for coincidences. But I think 3-3 with the the whole mirror setup and then everything else, where he just didn't recognize the person because of who he was. Just, it was just terrible. I, they, they could have scrapped this case and it would affect basically nothing in the plot. The fact that those characters didn't more or less show up at all in the credits, except for the gross old man, pretty much shows the impact of this case even from a plot standpoint. So I think this deserves to be an F tier. It is pretty awful. Speaking of bad, I'm willing to put 3-4 between lacking and awful. 3-4, I think, offended me, personally. Like, it was a case very similar to 3-1, where there's only, there's only trial, there's no investigation. But the plot point reveals of this one were so dumb. Like, this case opened up quite a few plot holes, I would say, in the whole plot line of 3-1. Of so, like, the whole point of something like 3-1, where we basically slowly find out about, like, the medicine for the first time, and, you know, these are the things that we're going to do to take down Dahlia the Hawthorne. In 3-4, it turns out they do the whole damn time! Why didn't they do anything about it before 3-1? What the hell was that? Why did they just let Phoenix walk around with the poison if they knew about it? By th because, like, the defendant literally killed themselves in court. How could you forget that plot point? Like, that was such a bad moment for Phoenix, right? So I think from a plot standpoint, I got pretty offended. Like, it, it gave the motivation for why 3-1 happened. But again, it's yet another case where I just feel like I thought less of Mia. 
I like Diego a lot less in general. I don't, was this, what, do you remember, Chad, if his womanizer comment was in 3-4 or 3-5? There was one where he had this, like, really awkward sexist comment. It was either 3-4 or 3-5, it popped up. But either way, in 3-4, where he was, I guess, supposed to be flirting with her, when they felt like they had no, oh, thank you, it was 3-5. So they had, they felt like they had no chemistry in 3-4. It just, it felt terrible. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, do I think it's as bad as Maid Cafe? Probably not. But I'm willing to put it at the bottom of D tier. So I'm noticing looking at the third game, most of their cases have ended up somewhere between C and F tier. Now here's here's the tricky part. We have one case left, 3-5. It was doing so good up until the end. Do I think that's enough to put it in great tier over amazing? Because I do think Godot as the killer was interesting. Larry with the painting was an interesting twist, I would say, with the evidence and probably the best use of Larry. Although the fact that he painted it upside down was kind of dumb. I don't know if I really like the circumstances surrounding it. I think what I'm going to do... I would have rated this higher, but I think it fell off at the end. So I think I liked the first game's fifth case more, despite me being annoyed by the 3D evidence. And I definitely liked the Edgeworth case, even though there was Edgeworth in 3.5. And that was definitely the highlight. If it was only the Edgeworth segments, I would have put this in S tier. But because... We basically have to deal with not the most annoying witnesses, but I would say probably the, the some of the worst plot points overall. I think I just got to I got to mark it down a little bit. I would say from a case standpoint, this was probably one of their stronger cases in terms of logic and presenting evidence. So if you're purely going off of that mechanic alone, I probably would have put it in S. But I think that's about it. So let let's reassess. Are there any in here we think we should adjust? before we go into the quote-unquote final call and our final thoughts on Phoenix Raid. So, I still... I think I agree. I like 1-4 the most of all the cases. I definitely hated 2-3 the most. I think originally I hated 2-4 more, but I think 2-3 wins out in bottom tier by having the awkward subtext with uh, Regina. Welcome, Dango. Indeed, we're at the tier list. So we're, we're giving our true final thoughts here. Evidence Law was a great meme. <laughs> I did like the I did like the killer. The supporting cast I thought was okay. I liked the idea of like the corrupt detectives, and it gave a little bit more of a reason for Edgeworth to leave in the second game. Even if it wasn't originally that that way, because they added the fifth game or fifth case in later. I still generally like the case. I just feel like it just wasn't as solid as 1-4 overall. Oh, you missed the final bit of trial. Sorry, Dango. 3-5, it did really well up until that final testimony. Man, did that open up a ton of plot holes in particular. Of like, if they just told literally anybody else, the whole murder wouldn't have happened. That was pretty bad. I could understand them not telling Phoenix, but why not any of the other characters, including the person at the head of the temple? Why wouldn't they mention this? There were so many outs in that case because of the way they set it up, it just ended up being disappointing. So I think 1-1 was a, a good tutorial case. It was short. They introduced the clock. Chat loved the clock. It had the joke prosecutor. So it helped, you, it helped set the standpoint of expectations for like the more serious... Um, Prosecutors, so I think I agree with that placement. 2 1, I think if it weren't for like the. The kind of, I don't know, just the whole thing about him being pushed away, the phone booth. I just feel it just wasn't overall as strong or succinct of a case as 1 1. Where 1 1, it felt like we were using actual reasoning, and then 2 1 was just banana. 2 1 could be summarized as banana, to be honest with you. But uh, I think still for a tutorial, it did what it needed to do. 
And as I said before, I did actually like the defendant, which is very rare in these cases. Usually the defendant is one of my least favorite characters. Then uh, one, two, I would say if it didn't have as many joke characters, I probably would have raised it up to good tier. It's, it's probably on the cusp of potentially being upgraded to B. But I, I think what kind of dragged it down was, again, just, just, just too many joke characters. <laughs> Clock, banana, Harlem shake, exactly. You could summarize them by just like a couple of words. And I feel like even though I like the concept of the body being dragged around and it really introduced like the concept of the map, Overall, didn't really care about the defendant. You know, we didn't we got some edge worth, but it was like, uh The Steel Samurai was an interesting thing to bring up again in future games, but I don't know. I just don't feel like the case overall was as compelling as some of the other ones. Uh similarly, I think for uh 1-3, which I have to even remind myself which one this is. Oh, I'm sorry, I did in the reverse order. So I was talking about 1-3. 1-2 was red-white, and I think that served to set up the, the, the plot of the game. So I think from a plot standpoint, it was a lot stronger, even if we never found out what red-white was doing. But yeah, um, I don't know. I would say overall, it was just, it was just very average. Like, it had moments in it that were memorable to me, but I don't think there was a, truly a point in it that really stood out to me amongst the other cases. Dango says Edgeworth, better defense attorney than Phoenix, exactly. So we already talked about 1 3. 3 1. If it wasn't for the grossness of Grossberg, the super insecurities of Mia, and honestly, the sometimes annoying gimmick of Phoenix coughing and sneezing, I might have rated this one a little higher. But yeah, e even for 3 1, I felt like it was kind of overstaying its welcome, which is kind of a weird thing to say at a short tutorial trial, but. Yeah. Probably my least favorite of the tutorials. Then up next we have 2-2 in order. So 2-2 I think where it just... Ugh. They introduced... They just introduced too many... Too many annoying comedy characters and that, that definitely extends to the one after that as well. Where I feel like Pearls really didn't add anything to the dynamic. I really didn't like the uncomfortableness of her becoming an adult throughout, so anything that kind of focused on her heavily, uh, whether it was in the third game or the second game, I think automatically just kind of took me out of those cases in general. So I'm not surprised that most of the ones that involve pearls <laughs> are in the D tier or lower, to be honest with you, because she was definitely, for me, one of the weak points. I think chat definitely points out Morgan as probably being one of the more memorable villains, comparatively. But not like, not in like, uh, I'm better than like the, the first game's like police chief or, you know, other things. So I think she's about appropriately rated in the D tier. Just, mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Then 3 2 and 3 4, they're roughly about the same, honestly. I think there's a little more of a gap between like 2 2 and 3 2. But the fact of like 3 2 and 3 4 involving just. I just, I don't even know where to begin. I, I guess, as I said before, the defendant in 3 2 dragged that case down real hard. He was, I think, my least favorite defendant in the entire series. Is that a fair statement, chat? Was he the most annoying defendant we had to defend? Is I I thought he was way worse than Larry. And sometimes people find Larry annoying. So sitting through his testimony and him whining or muttering constantly just ends up being a big drag on the case. Like I think Luke at me was more interesting than some of the mediocre tier villains, to be honest with you. But at the same time, the defendant was so much worse. I think on average, I would have to just put it a bit lower than the, the middle middle of the line, one, 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 two, one, three, three, ones, etc. Then finally, we have on the D tier, we have three fours case, where I felt like it was just strictly a worse version of the tutorial we had earlier. And as I said before, it did introduce a very annoying plot point of the medicine bottles that kind of went through. And then somehow the other person just gets away scot-free after that. That is insane. Like, that is actually insane that somebody could just poison themselves in court and the character walks away. Like, that's insane. The fact that we're supposed to take that as a plot point, I felt kind of insulting. 
So they definitely should have rewrote re 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 that if they wanted to do it. And as I said before, I didn't feel like any chemistry between Diego and her. Like, I got the he was the senior thing, but I never got the they were lovers for most of that dialogue. Do you know what I mean? Like, was it just me, chat? It, like, I felt like he was just taking on the role of Grossberg. I didn't think it was like, oh, we've been dating a year kind of thing. But anyway. Yeah, Grossberg Shudder. Then up next we have in the awful tier, we have the Maid Cafe. Again, the stereotypes in this one I think were a lot stronger than some of the bad ones that were in 1-3. Uh, Honestly, like, thinking about it, do I want to rate 3-1 higher than 1-3? Because I'm going to be honest with you, 1-3 had a lot of really bad characters. Maybe I actually bump 1-3 down. I'm going to be real with you. So think about it this way. 1-3 had the really gross nerd character. They had the card collector. They had the super forgettable photo character. Uh, Penny Nichols. Um, the villain was just kind of okay. You know what, chat? I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to put it It's better than 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to put it at the top of D tier. I thought about leaving it as mediocre, but honestly, there were a lot of characters in there I did not like. Any case with Hottie should be an F at the lowest, at the highest, yeah, pretty much. So I think I'm, I, I think I'm willing to readjust now that I've seen the list. I think if 1-3 didn't have so many bad characters that just kind of padded it out, I probably would have liked it more. So I, I'm willing, I'm willing to step it down to tier. This is why we got to reassess once we're done. Like, did we forget any basic plot points or characters? And 1-3 just had a lot of unlikable characters. So I don't, I don't think it deserves to be on the same thing as C tier. Like, Grossberg was gross in 3-1, but I don't know if he was as overall gross as, like, the nerd character and all those other characters combined. And on top of that, having really annoying comedy characters. So, yeah, I think I'm willing to adjust that. So we have the Maid Cafe, which is pretty much the lowlights of the game, the ridiculousness of the mirror setup, the ultra convenient customer that only looks at uh, certain parts of women, uh, the really gross flick his nose kind of characteristic reminded me of Hottie, which I think is my least favorite character in the series. There, there's competition for bottom three, don't get me wrong. But Flick His Nose Guy and Hottie are definitely in bottom three for me. No contest. The Chef is pretty close. I would say the Chef is probably bottom five, if we're being honest, across all the games. I really did not like these characters. Like, they're, like as much as I like Maggie Bird as a defendant, again, over a lot of the other characters, I really, 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 really disliked a lot of the witnesses, so... Hmm. Swing and a miss on that one. Chef and Old Bag are right down there too. Yeah, I would say Old Bag is probably third or fourth. She has some moments that are okay, but most of the time she just ends up being reused, which she already was kind of like not a great thing in the first game. So her having her role reused in the second and third game is not really great. I think that kind of drags it down. That's why I put kind of like 2-2 in D tier for similar reasons. 2-4 was really painful. This was the game that made me quit. Honestly, like, th like no joke, 2-4 should be either bottom 1 or bottom 2 by d definition. Like, this game made me so frustrated trying to stall out the trial. The amount of fun I had in that case was negative. It was in the negatives. I felt like it was wasting my time. I felt like we got nothing out of it. It skipped all the important moral quandaries the game could have had, which would have gone in a more interesting direction. Like, they posed the question, but then they're like, nah, it's okay, it's Phoenix Wright, they'll be not guilty. So they gave him an out, which was really, really unfortunate. And a lot of things that, like, kind of went okay were mostly just copies from 1-4, to be honest with you. So... Very disappointing case. Easily one of the worst. And it would be the worst if it wasn't for the clown. So I think chat can agree, clown is one of the worst cases. Clown has 
character arcs that don't really redeem the characters. It has an unlikable defendant. Arguably, he might be... Actually, actually, that's a good question. Is Maximum Galaxy, or whatever his real name was, is he worse defendant than the 2-4's uh, defendant? Because both of them were pretty... Or not 2-4's defendant. Um, I think it was 3-2. Two. 3-2's two defendant. Because I do feel like Ron Delight was really atrocious, but so is Maximilian. Ooh. They they have to be bottom two, right, chat? Am I forgetting somebody for worst defendant? Because those characters were terrible. I think what kind of saved 3 2 is that it was more like the villain was somewhat interesting. Max is the worst, interesting. Yeah. Personally, I think. I think in terms of personality, I think Max was worse. In terms of how annoyed I got, I probably I would say uh, Ron Delight was. I just did. I just didn't like either of those characters. Yeah, that was a that was a, just a huge whiff. I don't know what they were thinking with Max. Like it didn't even turn out like he was like renegotiating prices for his you know teammates so that they could do better. He had no redemption arc at that whole trial. What an insult! What a terrible case. Villain was terrible. The motive was very questionable. Probably one of the few times I would actually side with the villain on this one, because I'll screw all those people in that circus tent. <laughs> like honestly. Then they killed a lion. Like that this game that case had some of the worst plot points ever. So I don't think there's a single reason that should even be on the same remote tier as the other ones. Like I can have problems with two fours constant, like, oh you know, Maya's been kidnapped for like the fifth time. Might as well just put a tracking device on her kind of thing. Like, it's already annoying that that has happened, basically, again. And the Maid Cafe, the whole pandering to the audience, is, is in its own thing terrible, and I don't enjoy it. And each of those has every right to be in the bottom three. So you know what, chat? I'm feeling pretty good about this list, where I'm not, I was not impressed with uh, some of the cases here. Though I think 1-4 was the highlight for me. I think just in terms of the villain, I got very interested. I think certain trials were a bit better done than 1-4s, but I want to say overall, if we're, if we're counting the investigation or like the relevance to the plot arcs or even counting some of the witnesses, I think I just like 1-4 more. But if we're talking about case-wise, I probably enjoyed 1-5 a little more overall as a case. I just think its weak points were... Probably the investigation going on a little too long. I like them potentially doing things different to make investigation a bit more interesting, like the luminol spray or like shaping the vase. I just didn't like those additions, though, was the problem. And we ended up getting stuck twice because of it. And I think even though I appreciated them trying something new, and I do think overall the series did need to do something to make the investigation a lot less boring, which is what they decided to do in the second game by introducing the Magatama. Um, I just feel like it kind of missed the mark a little bit. Like, it was close, what I was looking for, but the execution was not quite there. And again, like, I like Maggie Bird. I think chat would agree. They love the, the, uh, the dancing badger. The blue badger. Remember, that was a big thing in the in the 1-5. I think the downside is it did involve characters I didn't like. Oh, actually, speaking of which, what cases was that annoying police officer in other than 1-5? Was it 1-3? The one with the microphone? Either way, chat, those kinds of characters drag down the first game's cases. To me, it doesn't really matter if it's in 1-2 or 1-3. That's It's not going to change my opinion. But that's an example, exactly. Yeah, Meekins is bottom five for sure. And the fact that they also put an annoying, like, feedback sound effect whenever he's introduced is, like, also, like, grating to me. Like, that caused me actual physical discomfort, as opposed to just not liking the character. Like, I actually really did not like that sound effect a lot. And the fact that it kept happening multiple times in trial was ridiculous. So there's definitely things to criticize, I think, across all the cases. But I think overall, like, the reason the things are in the bottom five as they were, were either big plot holes, really unlikable witnesses, um, annoying gimmicks at trial. Yeah, no, actually, that's a good summary of the bottom five of why they deserve to be there. I think 3-4 
was probably the surprise one for how low I ranked it. But honestly, like, the plot holes of that one and just, like, the ridiculousness of it. I, I, I don't think other cases in the third game got me as upset as 3-4. Like, the end of 3-5 definitely disappointed me, and that's why it ended up not in S tier. Uh, but 3-4's big reveal with the poison and everything else was ridiculous. And then, like, you have to think about this, too. So, like, wait a minute. Diego saw somebody die from poison in the courtroom, and then he drank coffee with the person that gave the the dead person poison? Like, is that a serious plot point we're expected to believe? Like, I'm telling you, chat, the more I think about 3-4, the more stupid it is. <laughs> I'm not gonna think about it any further. I already think it's it was one of the worst plot hole ones. Like, yeah, just think about it. It's like, wow, I just witnessed somebody die because they got poisoned. Oh, maybe I should go talk to the poisoner and have something to drink near them. Yeah. Like, genius tier, chat. Genius tier. But anyway. So I think those are our final thoughts, chat, on uh, the Phoenix Wright trilogy. Maybe in the future, maybe I will consider doing the other trilogy. I'm not feeling super motivated. I think what we'll do after this is we will see some of the spin-off games. Because I think from the standpoint of Phoenix Wright, I enjoyed Phoenix Wright cases the most when they did not focus on Phoenix, Maya, and Pearl. So like most of my top cases, it's because a lot of the focus was not really on them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not really surprised that's where I put it. Like, all the cases basically involving Edgeworth fairly heavily are in the top three. So, look forward to more of that. I mean, that kind of just reaffirmed things I kind of felt going forward. Like, 3-5's best segment was Edgeworth. 1-4, Edgeworth dealing with, uh, you know, his own prosecutorial worries versus, like, the father figure. I thought was somewhat interesting, and I liked it. Even if parts of it were... Could use a little touch up. I think overall I can't fault like small faults in that trial. It did not really hamper the enjoyment even when observed. And I think even things like 1-5, um, he didn't play as big a role in that, but I enjoyed him as a prosecutor co compared to the other characters. So I think with that, Chad, if there's any final thoughts you want to give for Phoenix Wright, now would be the time. Uh, indeed, Blue Donna. So overall, as I said before, I think the game... I like the first game overall. Like, there were cases that were okay, and that's fine. I think overall the first game was the strongest game, and let's see if that reflects in the score. My next favorite game was the third game, and I think that mostly reflects in the score, just due to how terrible some of the cases were in the second game. Like, the tutorial case was the highlight in the second game, I'd fully agree with that. Curls was somehow the highlight compared to the other cases, which is crazy because I don't like that character. That's crazy. <laughs> so it shows like how much I did not enjoy that second game. And then the third game, at least their worst cases were kind of short comparatively. The only one that kind of took a while to get through was probably 3-3. They, they knew better, chat. But overall, I think the third game was better than the second game. I think that's a fair statement. Like, I don't think the tutorial of 2-1 is gonna carry on its shoulders the rest of the trash heap <laughs> that was the second game. I'm gonna be honest with you. Even though I did rate 3-2 rate and 3-4 lower than 2-2, it's not a, as big of a gap as like the third cases or, or the third game's final case compared to the second game. Let's see what Chan has to say before we wrap up here. Overall, I enjoyed watching the series. Since the series I've always wanted to look into, the cases were definitely a mixed bag. Playing more awful characters than expected. Overall, I still liked it. One was the best game overall. Third, three was good with a few major detractors. Two was two, but it gave us Morgan Sarah. I think that's a fair summarization there from Chris in the chat. Larry's an evil mastermind. I mean, at one point, I just wanted everything to go back to Larry. Like, could you imagine Chad in the third game if he's like, no, I set the bridge on fire. And they're like, why'd you do it, Larry? And he's like, I want to see the world burn. That's where we get the evil mastermind reveal, where he manipulated the first murderer into uh, attempting to attack people. <laughs> he's secretly behind the misfortunes of all the people he's ever dated. He's like he's the widow maker chat. <laughs> Could you imagine? That would have been the best plot twist. I gave Dahlia the poison. I was the bear. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See chat, that would have been the best. You know it would have been. Chat would have been like dying if that happened. So yeah. 
it is disappointing that even the third game <sighs> if it if it was just like if they just tweaked like very small things like the third game please just completely replace the defendant that easily brought the same case with the same details mostly up to c tier i think it would have been fine with just one defendant change I still think plot-wise it wasn't the best, but again, that's personal bias. I did not like Pearls or Maya in 3-2. And then 3-4, I, I don't know. I don't know how they could expect to take us take that case seriously after the ridiculousness of everything that we know about Dahlia. Like, that case just got insanely bad in hindsight, for sure. So, I think with that chat, with the music done, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. So, if you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tier list. And hopefully you got a little bit of insight into some of the cases without going into, like, ultra-spoilers, surprisingly. You know, for, for talking about all the cases and not talking about who the killers were, we did a surprisingly tactful spoiler section, to be honest with you. So, we, I don't think we actually revealed as much as I, as I thought we were going to talk about. But honestly, I didn't think we need to talk about it that much. So, we'll leave it at that. But for now, chat, just remember, clown tier, avoid clown tier.